This is the second mini lecture for section 3.3 of the textbook. Now let's illustrate the product of 23 and 419 using expanded notation. It, for uh, products where you have both numbers more than one digit, it's not really feasible to use math strips and units and place value cards. That's where, why we're beginning with expanded notation. Okay, so what we have is 23 times 419. I'm going to first write each of these in expanded notation. So that would be 20 plus 3 times 400 plus 10 plus 9. Now I use the distributive property twice. First I'm going to distribute the, the 419 to the 20 and the 3. So I get 20 times 400 plus 10 plus 9 plus 3 times 400 plus 10 plus 9. The first three products, after I distribute the 20, are 8,000 plus 200 plus 180. And then I distribute the three, and the last three products are going to be 1,200 plus 30 plus 27. Okay, the point of doing this is that the six products that I performed were all fairly easy. It was just a product of one-digit numbers um, plus some power of 10. So it just had some zeros tacked on at the end, basically. Now I just have to add these six products, and that'll be the total product. And I'll do that in two steps, uh, just because it's written horizontally, and it's kind of hard to do that in your head. These first three are going to add up to 8,380. The second three add up to 1,257. And then when I put those together, I get 9,637. So we used the base 10 system to break this product down into six simple products, and then we added those products together. Okay, the, the drawback of doing it this way is that when you get to the point of adding the numbers, it's not really very convenient to do that because they're arranged horizontally. So it's more convenient to write them vertically, as we know. And that's what's accomplished in the partial product algorithm. So this does the same work, but it lines things up vertically. Okay, we have 419 times 23. 3 times 9 is 27. So I just write a, the whole 27 down there. 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 400 is 1,200. 20 times 9 is 180. 20 times 10 is 200. And 20 times 400 is 8,000. You see, these are the same six products I had up above. So now they're lined up vertically to make them easy to add. And we get the same result. And let's also look at the final algorithm, how you were taught to do it in grade school, most likely. So you have 419 times 23. And I begin by doing the 3 times the 419, kind of all at once. Yeah, I do 3 times 9, I get 27. So I put the 7 down, that's the 7 ones. And then the 20 ones, I exchange for 2 tenths. 3 times 
one ten plus two tens is three tens. Oh, sorry, it's five tens. And three times four hundreds is twelve hundreds. Okay, so I get our twelve fifty seven that we had up above. Now I do 20 times 419, and I'm going to put a zero here to remember that I'm, I'm really multiplying by 20, not by 2. Okay, some, some teachers just leave a space, but I, I don't think that's a very good idea. I think it's better to actually put the zero there, A, because it holds it to place, and B, because it reminds the student that you're not multiplying by 2, you're multiplying by 20. Okay, but... Now, now I'll work through it. I have the zero to remind myself of that at the end. Two times nine is 18. So I put an eight, carry the one. What does that mean? Well, two times nine is 18. So I write eight ones down here. And then I exchange 10 ones for one ten. Two times one plus one is three. So that's three tens. Although remember that the zero reminds us it's really 300. And then two times four is eight, so that's two times four hundred, so that's eight hundred. Okay, and so I add those two numbers. And we get the same thing. So you see what we're doing with the expanded notation or the partial products algorithm is exactly the same as what we're doing here. They're just broken up into more steps. Now, in the Middle Ages, they didn't do it exactly like this. They did something that was equivalent, um, but works a little differently. They used something called the lattice method. And I'd like to show you this partly because I think it's interesting, um, partly because sometimes it's nice to have a different way to do things when you're working with students. You know, it can revive interest in a topic that's kind of dead to them. And um, also because I have heard that some school districts actually use this to teach math mathematics. They, they do this in elementary school. And um, I think it's good for you all to have seen this. Yeah, I, I had a student recently, for instance, from I think Crystal City where they said the students were doing this. Okay, so the lattice method, let's use the lattice method to multiply 23 and 419. I didn't leave myself much space here, so I have to make kind of a small box. I want a two by three box. So it's a rectangle that I'm going to divide up into six squares, two by three. And I'm going to draw diagonals from the upper right to the lower left, like that. And across the top, I put my four, one, and nine. Down the side, I put my two and three. And now I'm ready to multiply. Okay, in each box, I write the product of the number above and to the right. I put the ones place in the bottom corner and the tens place in the top corner. So when I do four times two, I get eight. I'll just put a zero eight there. And then one times two is two, so I put a zero two. Nine times two is 18, so it's one eight. Four times three is 12, one two. One times three is three. Nine times three is 27. And so I fill in the box like that with the six products. Now I'm gonna add down the diagonals, starting with the lower right-hand corner. And you, you don't have to do this, but let me, let me kind of shade in every other diagonal so you can understand what I'm referring to here when I say add down the diagonals. You see, I, I take this first diagonal, which is just the corner containing seven, and that just gives me seven. And then this next diagonal contains an eight, a two, and a three. I add those up and I get 13. So I put a three here, and then I carry that one to the next diagonal. That, that's not a 12, it's just a 1 and a 2. So I have 1, 2, 0, 2, and 1. Those all add up to 6. And then 0, 8, and 1 add up to 9. 
So I put that on the side there. And then in this corner, I just have a zero. So I put a zero. And then there's our answer, 9,637. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do a three digits times three digits. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. It's a three digit number times a three digit number, so we need a three by three box. You know, the funny thing is when I was talking to that student who said they were using this in their classroom, it was a paraprofessional at an elementary school. They said that the students enjoyed this method, but that they had a hard time drawing the boxes. That was a real problem for them. So it wasn't the method. It was having to draw the box beforehand every time. And that was taking up a lot of time. So this may not be the best way to instruct, but sometimes it comes in handy. All right, so we have uh, 763, so 7, 6, and 3 across the top times 249, so 249 down the side. In each little square, we multiply the number above and to the right. So we have 14, 12, 6, 28, 24, 12, 63, 54, and 27. Okay, so that, that gets the box filled in. Now I'm going to add down the diagonals, starting in the lower right-hand corner, which just gives me 7. And then in the next diagonal, I have 2, 2, and 4, which add up to 8. And then I have 6, 1, 4, 5, and 3. So let's see, 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, plus 6 is 19. So I put a 9, and then I squeeze that 1 into the next diagonal. Now I have 0, 2, 2, 8, 6, and 1. Let's see, 2, 2, and 6 add up to 10. 8 and 1 add up to 9, so I get another 19. So I put a 9, carry the 1. Now I have 1, 4, 2, and 1. 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's just an 8 there. And then this top corner just gives me 1. So my answer is 189,987. Okay, so this is another method I'd like you to be able to do.